Hey friends of Wildland Fire, Darren Glebo here, State Fire Meteorologist for South Dakota. Today we are doing our second installment of the Don't Use the Haynes Index video series. This installment will cover stability or why the Haynes Index really isn't a metric of instability. To start off, let's go back into Don Haynes' paper. Remember that this is originally called the Lower Atmosphere Severity Index, L-A-S-I, where the S stands for severity not stability. In fact, the only time Don Haynes references stability in his paper is in the introduction section when he's talking about other studies. At no point throughout the paper does he even reference his index with respect to stability or instability. I think that's a very important concept because a lot of people want to talk about the Haynes index and how it's a measure of atmospheric instability, and it is not. And let me elaborate a little bit more on that. So atmospheric instability just references um, the ability of parcels of air to freely rise. So in an unstable atmosphere, you have a parcel of air, it's warmer than its surroundings, and that parcel of air, if displaced upwards, will accelerate away from its original position. Contrast that with a stable atmosphere. If you have a stable atmosphere and you take a parcel of air, a blob of air, and you displace it upwards, it will want to return to its original vertical position. Stable atmospheres suppress vertical motion. Unstable atmospheres uh, encourage uh, vertical motion. Interesting point. The atmosphere is only absolutely unstable at a very shallow layer near the Earth's surface under intense solar heating or above a wildfire. So if you have clear skies, you have a lot of sunshine, you can heat up the ground, uh, and you get parcels of air that then are warmed from the ground being warmed up that then become warmer than their surroundings and they can freely rise. Or if you look at the air above a wildfire, the wildfire has heated that air substantially and that air is warmer than the air uh, around the wildfire, so you get a nice rising uh, convective column. And so absolute instability in the atmosphere is, is actually pretty rare, um, and it really never occurs outside of a layer of air that's, that's right near the surface. But remember, Don Haynes doesn't look at surface layers. He looks at layers of air that are in the kind of lower to mid troposphere, and he did that intentionally. But I want to point out that the lapse rates Don Haynes uses to give his Haynes index a value of one, two, or three for the lapse rate side of things all represent stable atmospheres. Remember the Haynes index combines two things, combines a dew point depression or a dryness term with a lapse rate term. Those two things are each given a value of one, two, or three, and then are combined together to get a Haynes index value of two to six. So those breakpoints for a Haynes value of one, two, or three for the lapse rate side of things are up on your screen right now. The top section is for the low variant of the Haynes index. The middle sections for the mid elevation variant of the Haynes index and the bottom sections for the high elevation variant of the Haynes index. And the lapse rates or the temperature change with height, temperature cooling with height, um, those lapse rates are given kind of in that, that middle column. And there are a range of lapse rates then that are associated to a value of one, two, or three for both the low, the middle, and the high variants of the Haynes index. Recall that the low uh, variant of the Haynes index. Uh, looks at a lapse rate from 950 to 850 millibars. The mid ranges from 850 to 700 millibars. And the high elevation variant goes from 700 to 500 millibars. Now, to get a Haynes value of 3 in the, uh, the low elevation variant, you need a temperature cooling with height of greater than 8 degrees Celsius within that layer. To get a 3 for the mid-elevation mid variant, you need a temperature change of greater than 11 degrees Celsius or cooling of greater than 11 degrees Celsius within that layer. And for a high elevation from 700 to 500 millibars, you need a temperature cooling greater than 22 degrees Celsius to get a value of 3 for the Haynes index. And that's really important. Because if you actually look at a temperature lapse rate of 8 degrees for the low, 11 degrees for the mid, or 22 degrees for the high elevation index, and you plot it on a thermodynamic diagram, and I encourage any meteorologist to do that who's watching this, you will see that that lapse rate is inherently stable. It is not unstable whatsoever, which is an interesting point. So even a value of three, which is the maximum value you can get for the lapse rate side of things for the Haynes index, does not imply an unstable atmosphere. It really implies a stable atmosphere because frankly, there's no physical process in the mid to lower troposphere that will lead to an unstable 
atmosphere with respect to dry convection or an absolutely unstable atmosphere in those areas. Furthermore, if you look at those layers, um, you know, the lapse rates and then its associated Haynes index value of one, two, or three, those lapse rate uh, ranges are completely arbitrary. They're not based upon any kind of science whatsoever. They were just kind of chosen out of the blue. And, and, and frankly, Don Haynes really doesn't discuss in detail why he chose the ranges or the thresholds or the breakpoint values he chose to get values of one, two, or three um, for the lapse rate side of the Haynes index. So there's really not a lot of science that went into that, um, which makes it even more dubious as to why we continue to use the Haynes index as a metric of atmospheric instability. The Haynes index is not a measure of atmospheric instability. It is not whatsoever. Frankly, you can have a Haynes index of six and the atmosphere at those layers are still is still stable. Still inherently stable. So why do we talk about the Haynes index and stability in the same breath? We shouldn't. So stop doing it. Have you ever heard somebody on the fire line say, hey, we've got a Haynes of six today, so the atmosphere is very unstable? That is not true. That is not true at all. The surface layer could be unstable, but the layers that the Haynes index is seeing are not going to be unstable. We have to decouple this idea of atmospheric stability with what the Haynes index is showing. So really, to summarize everything for this video, we cannot use the Haynes index to assess atmospheric instability because the lapse rates given, even the lapse rates that are given for values of three for that side of the Haynes index are not inherently unstable. They are stable. So let's stop talking about the Haynes index and atmospheric stability. And frankly, let's just stop using the Haynes index altogether. So there's my contact information. If, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to send me an email. We can discuss more about uh, the Haynes index and why it is not a measure of atmospheric instability.